Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest. Thanks for watching. So today we have a Fedora spin for you and it's a classy Fedora spin called Chappelle Linux. And um, you know this is one of those distributions that I've never really looked at before. Um, I typically don't gravitate to Fedora and I know there's a, a large Fedora fan base out there. But, uh, you know, Fedora kind of is one of those distributions that has a reputation that when they have a new release, they, um, the, you know, I've, I've heard people say, uh, wait two or three weeks before you try the new release and you'll have a, uh, a good stable run of Fedora. So, um, you know, Fedora Workstation 24 has been around long enough that I think it's very, very stable, I would say. And, um, you know, so for the people who run Fedora, uh, you'll hear really good things. But now Fedora is not the most user-friendly uh, distribution of Linux. It's it's kind of bland as far as uh, the overall look. It's typically seen running the GNOME desktop, which is what we have here. But what the team at Chapeau Linux have been able to do here with their spin is, I think, create a, a, an attractive, classy uh, spin of Fedora that would make it much more suitable for someone fairly new to Linux, maybe not a brand new user. I think there are other distributions better suited for that. I uh, want to just kind of go through a few things here that illustrate what I'm talking about. So they have already installed um, you know, Media Codex, Adobe Flash, um, and, and that type of thing is already set up for you. And that can be you know, a little troubling uh, for Fedora if you're not familiar and, and you know, you're, you're not used to working with RPMs and things like that. Uh, Third-party software tools uh, that are included and uh, curated for all users, they say, without tainting the simplicity of the GNOME desktop, and I would say they have achieved that. Now, for the gamers out there, Steam and Play on Linux is already set up and installed, and that's something I want to um, put through its paces to see how well it's implemented and a portable toolkit so they've added some things like uh, Fedora live image burner um, GNOME disk gparted things like that clam antivirus so um, again we're gonna step through some of the packages I think that would make this really a nice choice for somebody who says hey I'm a Fedora fan or I've been wanting to try Fedora uh, maybe they weren't successful the first time in getting everything set up the way they wanted in Fedora. Then this is certainly a distribution I think you should consider. Um, so we'll jump over and look at a few things. I really like the, and I call it classy, I, I think this uh, icon theme that they've chosen here, it's called Mocha. I think it, it, it's um, implemented very well throughout the system. Now I added a few things here and we'll kind of jump around and get into that. Pre-installed was the uh, GNOME tweak tool and this is GNOME 3.20 and again working off of the Fedora 24 workstation base. Now um, I liked that they had the tweak tool set up and pre-installed and they also had some really nice extensions set up and pre-installed so we'll step through those uh, this is that mocha icon theme and I also found it interesting that they chose oxygen white um, which is a KDE uh, plasma <laughs> cursor theme but it works well with this it kind of gives it a classy look now they had some of the extensions were already uh, set up so caffeine which will disable your screensaver and auto suspend that was great to see that set up and, and running when I first launched in. They also had um, um, the other extensions that you could just turn on, which were application menu, which you see up here, and places. And I just thought it'd be easier to illustrate a few things uh, for the video in turning those on. User themes was already on by default. Now the fonts, I had to go in and make some slight adjustment there. It was set to grayscale and I turned that to RGB or RGBA because I'm connected to an external monitor. And then the scaling factor was set on about 80 and I bumped that up. So, And these aren't the most beautiful fonts by default, but they're not bad. Again, I think you know they've done a nice job with um, just really a, an attractive uh, this is the default wallpaper here and it's again got a classy look and just the name Chapeau Linux it makes me want to say something like I will have a side of escargot with my Chapeau Linux s'il vous plaît 
All right, that's enough with the uh, impersonations. I'm not good at it anyway. So, uh, nice selection of wallpapers here to choose from, built in. So I think um, you know again save save the user some time. Let's step through some of the applications that I think uh, really would help make this uh, a better distribution choice for someone fairly new to Linux. Here's the Clam antivirus that was pre-installed, and you typically don't see that. Uh, Play on Linux, great to see that pre-installed. Some of these apps are default GNOME apps. Uh, under games, you've got a few default, uh, these may be default GNOME games, you know, chess, things like that, but there's Steam. So again, I need to spend some time there and see how well that's implemented and set up. Uh, you see some of the usuals under graphics. You've got GIMP and Shotwell and Simple Scan, and then Darktable. Uh, haven't spent a lot of time with Darktable. Office, you've got uh, LibreOffice already set up. And then there was a uh, pretty good selection here under sound and video, uh, more than you typically see under most um, distributions as far as pre installed. So, uh, Alsa Mixer, Braserio Cheese, I installed Camoso, uh, uh, I think there's the default music player. OpenShot Video Editor was pre-installed, Pulse Audio, Rhythmbox, Sound Converter, Sound User, Sound Recorder, VLC Media, I'm out of breath. No, but a pretty good selection here. Um, so if you're someone into, uh, into um, you know, editing, editing videos, things like that, it's, it's already here for you for the most part, whereas, you know, the standard default Fedora install would not have quite the selection that you see set up here. And then the Adobe Flash, you see that uh, already in place, which could be a little bit of a problem in Fedora if you're not familiar with RPM packages and things like that. Uh, system tools, you've got, there. there's the Fedora Media Writer. Again, I haven't spent any time with that. It's the first time I've seen it, actually. Uh, don't use Fedora-based uh, distros often, but that does look interesting, and it looks it's professional looking, and it kind of matches the rest of the uh, theming that's going on there. And let's move on here. Uh, wine. So here you have just about everything that I can imagine you would need to have a successful uh, wine setup. So big time saver there. And under other, you have their uh, Yum Extender. So we'll, uh, uh, looks like, uh, let's see here. Looks like now we have some updates. So when I first installed, I went in, there were not many updates. It looks like we have a uh, pretty good list of updates there, not too crazy. And let's just take over, jump over and take a look at repository so you'll see here um, you'll see here the Adobe repositories um, Fedora repositories play on Linux and then the other thing pre-installed is RPM fusion free as well as RPM fusion non free so those are all set up and that's one of those things with Fedora most people go to if they're setting up Fedora to get access to some of those applications and, and things like that and to have that all set up again. Uh, so if you're interested in Fedora and you're into gaming or video editing, um, you know, for the most part, they've done, I think, a, a very nice job here with getting all of this set up. Um, you know, a lot of what you're going to find here, are your typical GNOME uh, layout and everything. So there's you know there's not a lot new there to show you uh, it seems fast and fluid and again very attractive and classy and so if you're interested in Fedora maybe that's something you've thought about trying before uh, or you've tried it in the past and you just weren't successful I would say definitely give this a look uh, put this on your list to try and um, you know I like what they've done here so uh, I'm gonna keep this one kinda short wanted to take a quick look this is not something I personally would use as a daily driver I you know for me it's kind of limiting on the software side of things um, more so than other distros out there and GNOME is while I'm coming around to it it's still not my desktop of choice but if you're a GNOME fan and you kind of want to try something new 
definitely, I would say, give this one a look. All right, thanks for watching, and we will check you later.